What? Huh? Two gameplays in one week? That's right, gang. This week we have another EDH gameplay lined up just for you. This week I'm playing my Erebos deck. Matt is playing his Edric Spymaster of Tress deck. Eric, who's new to the channel, is playing General Tazri. And Sean is playing Mizzix of the Ismagus. For openers, I keep Blighted Fen, Swamp, Crypt Rats, Jet Medallion, Lash Wrath, Myogen of Night's Reach, and Cabal Coffers. Sean's hand had a Mountain, Wild Ricochet, Curious Homunculus, Melic Is It Paragon, Is It Signet, Thought Vessel, and Shivan Reef. Matt's hand had Simic Guildgate, Island, Dissolve, Ninja of the Deep Hours, Viridian Corruptor, Signal Pest, and Wharf Infiltrator. Eric had to mulligan down to 5 and keeps Beastmaster Ascension, McKindy Patrol, Shape Sharer, Rugged Highlands, and Forest. Eric won the die roll and starts us off. For his first turn, Eric draws a card and plays it, playing Exotic Orchard as his land drop and passes to Sean. Sean plays a Foil Shiv and Reef and passes to Matt. Matt plays Simic Guildgate tapped and passes to me. I drop Blighted Fens and pass to Eric. Eric plays a Forest and passes back to Sean. Sean plays an Island and casts Curious Homunculus before passing to Matt. Matt plays an Island and casts Palace Familiar before passing to me. For my turn, I play a Swamp and cast Jet Medallion before passing to Eric. Eric plays a Mountain for his turn and drops a huge target in the form of Beastmaster Ascension. Sean plays a Mountain and ramps like crazy, casting Thought Vessel, and then tapping Thought Vessel in his last remaining land to cast Is It Signet. With nothing else, he passes to Matt. Matt plays Reliquary Tower before casting everyone's favorite Simic Elf, Edric, Spymaster of Trest. Moving to combat, Palace Familiar swings into Eric for one. Matt gets to draw a card and moves to his second main phase and with nothing else, passes to me. For my turn, I play Urborg, Tomb of Yogmoth, and cast Erebos, God of the Dead. For Eric's turn, he plays a Plains and then casts Unexpected Result, which hits Corrupted Graphstone. With nothing else, he passes to Sean. Sean plays an Island and casts Mizzix, the Ismagus. Moving to combat, he attacks me for one with the Homunculus and draws a card. Matt's turn has a forest come into play, and he continues to flood the board with a bunch of little beaters. First he casts Benthic Infiltrator, and follows it up with a Signal Pest. Then, moving to combat, he swings Palace Familiar at Sean for one and draws a card. With nothing else, he passes to me. In comparison, my turn of playing a Swamp and casting Lash Wrath before passing is pretty tame. Eric also has a bit of a slow turn, and he plays Rugged Highlands, gaining one life, and then casts his general, General Tazri. As she enters the battlefield, General Tazri triggers, and Eric gets to go find Drana's Emissary before passing to Sean. Sean drops a mountain for his turn, and then taps the Homunculus and four lands to cast Mana Geyser. This nets him one experience counter and 13 red mana. Using some of that red mana and one island, Sean casts Melek, Is It Paragon? This allows him to reveal the top card, and Essence Backlash is on top of his library. Sean then takes one tapping Shiv and Reefs to get a blue mana and casts Blast of Genius targeting General Tazri. Sean then draws three cards and discards Essence Backlash to deal four to the general. This also nets him a second experience counter. Not wanting to let that lovely mana go to waste, Sean then casts Electrolyze and Wild Ricochets it. He targets Signal Pest, Palace Familiar, and Edric Spymaster of Trest. Sean also gets to draw two cards from the two Electrolyzes and he gets two more experience counters. For Matt's turn, he casts Mystic Remora and then adds to his field by casting Treetop Scout and Wharf Infiltrator. With nothing else, he passes to me. For my turn, I drop Cabal Coffers and then cast Crypt Rats. Moving to combat, I swing Lash Wraith at Sean for four damage. Eric's turn has him casting Drana's Emissary and he further bolsters his ally count by casting McKindy Patrol before passing to Sean. At the beginning of Sean's upkeep, Curious Homunculus triggers and I respond by activating Cabal Coffers to generate 5 black mana, and then I pump all that black mana to Crypt Rat's activated ability, dealing 5 damage to every creature and player. Sean responds by casting Brainstorm, which allows Matt to draw a card, but can't find an answer and the ability resolves. Moving to his first main phase, Sean plays Evolving Wilds and cracks it to find an island. Sean then recasts Mizzix and passes to Matt. During Matt's upkeep, he has to pay one to keep Mystic Remora on the field. And during his first main phase, he plays a Forest and then casts Viridian Corruptor, blowing up my Lash Wraith. Matt is unfortunately unable to attack and has to pass to me. For my turn, I play a Swamp and then cast Read the Bones, taking two damage and scrying two. I keep the two cards on top and Matt gets to draw for Mystic Remora. I then activate Cabal Coffers to generate six black mana and cast Liliana of the Dark Realms. Matt draws again. I uptick Liliana to find a swamp, and then cast Expedition Map. I crack the map to find Deserted Temple and pass. Eric misses his land drop for turn and casts Soul Ring, and Matt chooses not to draw. Eric then recasts General Tazri and finds the Hero of Goma Fada before passing to Sean. During Sean's first main phase, he plays an island and casts Thirst for Knowledge. Matt gets to draw a card, and Sean discards two land cards. Moving to combat, Mizzic attacks Liliana for two, and Sean passes his turn after the damage is done. During Matt's upkeep, he has to pay two colorless mana for Mystic Remora, 
and he moves to his first main phase, playing Rogue's Passage. Matt then casts Biden of Thassa and swings Viridian Corruptor at me for two infect and draws a card. For my turn, I play Deserted Temple as my land drop and uptick Liliana to find myself a swamp. I then activate Cabal Coffers, generating seven black mana, and cast Myogen of Night's Reach. During my combat step, I swing Erebos at Matt. During my second main phase, I remove the Divinity Counter from Myogen of Night's Reach, but Sean has the perfect answer for it and stifles the ability. With nothing else, I pass to Eric. During Eric's turn, he plays Boros Guildgate before he casts Hero of Gomafada. As Hero enters the battlefield, all of his creatures gain indestructible and Eric moves to combat. Eric swings McKinney Patrol at Liliana and Beastmaster's Ascension gains a counter. I opt to jump with Myogen of Night's Reach, which the McKinney Patrol is able to kill, and Eric's combat step is over. With nothing else, Eric passes to Sean. Sean's turn is pretty quick, as he plays a mountain during his first main phase and moves straight to combat. As I have no blockers, Sean swings Mizzix at Liliana and gets in for two. With nothing else, he passes to Matt. On Matt's upkeep, he chooses not to continue paying for Mystic Remora's cumulative upkeep and he lets it go to the graveyard. During his first main phase, he plays an island, casts Noble Quarry, and then moves to his combat step. Matt swings his Viridian Corruptor at me, and I respond by untapping Cabal Coffers and reactivating it to generate 7 black mana. I then pay 6 mana and 6 life to draw 3 cards with Erebos, and declare no blocks. Matt chooses to use Ninjutsu to replace a Viridian Corruptor with Ninja of the Deep Hours. With this resolving, I take 2 damage and Matt draws 2 cards. With nothing else in his second main phase, Matt passes to me. For my turn, I play a Swamp and once again uptick Lillian to find another Swamp and put it in my hand. I then activate Cabal Coffers to generate 8 black mana and pay 4 to cast Magus of the Coffers. I then use 4 mana and 4 life to draw 2 more cards and at the end of my turn, I have to discard 3 cards. For Eric's turn, in his first main phase he casts Ponder and then puts them on the top and draws a card. Eric plays a Mountain and then casts Shapeshearer which triggers Hero of Gamafada. He then casts McKindy Aeronaut and moves to combat. Hero swings at Liliana and General Tazri goes at Matt. Beastmaster triggers twice and Eric gets two more counters on the enchantment. As a result of his attack, Liliana dies and Matt takes three commander damage. Eric has nothing to do in his second main phase and passes to Sean. Sean starts off by playing a Mountain and then casts Price of Progress. No one's able to counter it, and I take 8 damage, Eric takes 10, Sean takes 2, and Matt takes 6. With nothing else, he passes turn. For Matt's turn, during his first main phase, he taps 2 lands and delves away his graveyard to cast Treasure Cruise. He draws 3 cards and then plays an island. He then casts Coiling Oracle and reveals Sylvan Ranger, drawing it, and then passes. For my turn, I play a Swamp and activate Cabal Coffers to generate 9 black mana. Using 2 mana to tap Magus of the Coffers, I generate another 9 black mana, bringing me to a total of 16 black mana. I then wipe the board with Black Sun Zenith, giving all creatures minus 4 minus 4. I then cast Profane Command, choosing to deal 8 damage to Sean and bringing back Myogen of Night's Reach, who, unfortunately, does not come back with a Divinity Counter. Eric's able to hit his land drop and he plays Command Tower before recasting General Tazri. As his general enters the battlefield, he gets to go and find an ally, and this time he finds Zulport Cutthroat. This is universally a red flag for everyone, and it's only made a reality as Eric casts Zulport Cutthroat and passes turn. Unfortunately for Sean, he doesn't seem to be able to do very much this turn, so he recasts his commander and then plays Is It Boilerworks, returning one of the tapped islands to his hand. With nothing else, he passes to Matt. Matt is probably the most affected player by all of my board wipes, and in his first main phase he casts Sylvan Ranger, who goes to his library and finds him an island. With not much in the way of defenders, Matt then casts Narnum Renegade and passes to me. For my turn, I play a Swamp and cast Mindstone before activating Cabal Coffers to generate 10 black mana. I then move to cast Rise of the Dark Realms, but Matt counters it with Dissolve. Resolving his scry, Matt chooses to put the top card of his library on the bottom. I then pay 1 mana to sacrifice Mindstone to draw a card which unfortunately doesn't help me very much. I then untap Cabal Coffers with the Deserted Temple and reactivate it to generate another 10 black mana. I choose to cast Necrotic Ooze and then use 2 life and 2 mana to draw a card. That card just so happens to be Sword of the Animist and I cast it and then equip it onto Erebos before moving to combat. During my combat step, I swing Erebos at Eric and the sword triggers to get me a swamp. Eric chooses to jump with Zulapart Cutthroat and everyone Everyone takes one but he doesn't gain one thanks to Erebos. With nothing else, I pass turn. Eric unfortunately misses his land drop and can't profitably attack me or Matt, so he passes his turn to Sean. Sean responds to Eric's end of turn by casting Scour from Existence on my Necrotic Ooze. For Sean's turn, like a true control player, he plays an island and passes. Matt's first main phase has Edric, Spymaster of Trest, re-entering the battlefield, and he follows up by casting Mausoleum Wanderer. He then moves to combat, swinging Narnum Renegade at Eric, dealing one damage and drawing two cards. 
During his second main phase, he casts Sylvan Safekeeper to protect his general, and passes to me. For my turn, I play a Swamp and then activate Cabal Coffers, generating 12 black mana. I cast Runescarred Demon for 6 and find a card. I then cast Grey Merchant of Ashfidel for 4 mana and drain everyone for 8 and gain 24. With my remaining mana and 2 life, I draw a card thanks to Erebos and I move to my combat step. I swing Erebos at Matt and the sword triggers to find me another Swamp, but once again my god gets chumped and Matt blocks with Sylvan Ranger. During my second main phase, I have nothing else, so I pass turn. For Eric's turn, he plays Evolving Wilds and cracks it to find a Swamp before passing to Sean. Sean draws what must be the last land in his deck, or at least I hope so, and plays a mountain. He then negotiates with Eric, asking him to take two damage so that he can draw a card and hopefully find an answer. Eric responds to Sean's attack by using Cross and Grip on my Sword of the Animist. Sean does two damage to Eric, and he gets to draw a card. During his second main phase, he casts Thought Flare and discards two lands. He then casts Fairy Artisans, which is a great card in my opinion, and passes turn. Matt plays a Forest for his turn, and he casts Hypnotic Siren as an aura, stealing my Runescarred Demon. Moving to combat, he swings the Renegade at me and the Wanderer at Eric. Each creature deals 1 damage to us, and Matt gets to draw 4 cards. Matt then casts Merfolk Spy, which Sean gets a copy of thanks to Fairy Artisans, and passes to me. I respond to Matt's end of turn by spending 8 mana and 8 life to draw 4 cards. For my turn, I play a Swamp and tap Cabal Coffers to generate 13 black mana. I use 1 mana to use Deserted Temple to untap Coffers and then pay 2 more to retap the Coffers, generating 23 black mana. I announce that I'm going to cast Exsanguinate for 24, and Matt casts Spell Pierce to try and counter the spell, but unfortunately for the table, I have mana for days, and as a result, everyone dies. It's at this point that Eric reveals his hand, and we get to see that Rite of Replication was coming next, and he was about to kill us all. Game review time. So it's kind of funny that unlike the last game where Sean wasn't able to draw land until the very end, this game was pretty much the polar opposite. Sean only drew lands, and pretty much since the beginning. It's a real shame though, because the deck looks like a lot of fun, and Sean's built it so it's not combo oriented, and instead looks more like a Spellslinger type deck. Matt's deck was stylized around Edric's Flying Men deck, which plays a lot of low drops and a lot of counter spells, and just draws a ton of cards. Unfortunately for Matt, he drew most of his soft counters, which are ones that you can pay to get around them, and the only hard counter he had in his hand was Dissolve. It also didn't help that I wiped the board twice and took away a lot of his resources. I think the board wipes on my part were well timed, as if I hadn't done them at the point that I'd had, Matt would have drawn a million cards and pretty much stolen the game away. Erebos does what he does best, which is draw cards at the expense of life. I got really low at some points, but I was always able to bounce back thanks to a lot of life gain in the deck. Eric was playing a very budget-friendly ally deck, and unfortunately having to mulligan as low as he did really didn't help him out this game. It might not be on the same level as Food Chain Tazri is, but the more allies he has on the field means the more triggers he gets whenever another one enters the battlefield, and that can add up pretty quickly. Please be sure to tune in every Monday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video, with a second video popping up sometime during the week. You can also follow me on Twitter at mtgmudsta, or check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in part by support from my Patreons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below or in the About section. You can also visit FlipSideGaming.com, who I've recently started an affiliated sponsorship with. If you enter the promo code MTGMUDSTA, as seen below in all caps, on orders over $10, you'll get 10% off and help out the channel. Their two locations host EDH nights with Clifton Park being on Mondays and East Greenbush being on Wednesdays. As always, thank you guys for watching and please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more.